When we talk about junk food, it is a common thought to consider it as an American invention from the late 20th century globalization. But if that was the case, what did the innumerable bachelors and students eat in medieval Europe? The concept of fast food goes back to even Roman times in urban cities where there were a great many poor or single adults living in small rooms. These people had no money or space to lay in stores of food, and they could afford neither cooking utensils nor fuel to prepare food. They would rely on the local cooks of noble houses to provide them with scraps, leftovers, and stale bread. The place of fast food in the society was much more prominent in the Middle Ages. If you're thinking about knights and bards riding their horse down into the market street to grab a Big Mac and donuts, you are somehow right. Well, the knights did not ride their horses to grab a bite in these cook shops on a usual day. The fast food is more of a poor man's fare. Many artisans, other workers, and classes of the urban poor, such as impoverished widows, lived in single rooms where there were no cooking facilities, not even a hearth. From wills that inventory possessions, it is possible to gain a glimpse of the difficult circumstances in which they lived. The bequests of the poor women included only clothing and bedding, which means that they must have lived in inexpensive lodgings with neither furnishings nor cooking equipment. What did these people living on society's margins eat? The one food that was cheap, readily available, and not immediately perishable, was bread, which formed the mainstay of their diet. However, not having any cooking facilities or fuel, the common man relied on the public or communal oven in their town. It would usually be a large hearth oven operated by a small staff where the townsfolk could bring their dough or rarely some meat, and the tradesmen would bake the goods for them, charging a minor fee for the fuel. In the late 12th century, there was a fast food area on the Thames in London constituting of a number of cook shops, a medieval version of a drive-in, where hungry travelers could fill up. These shops provided a range of pricing and foods and were open around the clock offering meat pies, hotcakes, pancakes, bread, wafers, fritters, and sweets. All over Europe, the communal ovens expanded into small cookshops or eateries for the poor. These cookshops functioned like medieval drive-ins where customers walked up to buy hot, prepared food and usually brought it home. Meat pies and pasties were especially adaptable for ease of carrying and consumption. The modern protocols of food safety and hygiene standards are quite strict. When we go to a restaurant and find anything to be unhygienic, we start feeling uneasy and consider eating somewhere else. However, the concepts of food safety and hygiene were almost non-existent in the medieval ages. The cooks in the cookshops were generally not well regarded. The common view of them was that they were dishonest and dirty. Both of these qualities affected the wholesomeness as well as the safety of the food. The customers had to watch out for spoiled meat in their food. Norwich sources from the late 13th century indicate that cooks from a neighboring town made sausage and pudding from diseased pork that was not fit to eat. During the same period, cooks and pasty makers apparently warmed up pasties that were several days old and spoiling. York ordinances prohibited the sale of fresh meat kept for more than 24 hours or the sale of undercooked pasties or those with tainted meat, yet York cooks were successfully indicted for all of these practices. Other unsafe food practices included the production of pasties and meat pies from tainted rabbit, geese, and offal, or to pass beef pasties off as venison. In Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, the host of the Tabard Inn was infamous for the use of warmed up pies and the presence of numerous flies in his establishment. A common saying in late medieval and early modern times was that God sends the meat, but the devil sends cooks. The cooks would add a lot of spices so one could not notice the smell or taste of the rotten meat. So people began to favor the places that added less spice as it meant the food was not spoiled. Hence, in Europe, bland food became a symbol of fresh food and why many European cuisines are still considered bland to this day. When it came to sweets, medieval Europeans loved custards, cakes, and fritters. According to a medieval cookbook, the English loved fritters of all kinds. Some recipes called for figs, apples, and almonds as fritter ingredients. 
Because medieval ingredients were more limited than today, Europeans got creative with their fritters, even frying up sweetened cottage cheese and calling it fritter of milk. In fact, funnel cakes made their first appearance in the medieval era. The first funnel cakes were called crisps or fried cakes topped with sugar. However, sugar was expensive during most of the medieval period, putting it outside the reach of most people. Instead of using sugar and sweets, many recipes call for honey. One fritter recipe from England stuffed fried dough with gingered almonds and topped the fritter with honey, and another recipe called for honeyed fritters with herbs. Gingerbread was another common medieval sweet that used honey. In medieval gingerbread, the cook started by clarifying honey and then stirring breadcrumbs into the honey and letting it simmer. Spices like ginger, cloves, and pepper gave the gingerbread a strong, sweet flavor. Soft pretzels were a popular treat in medieval Europe. They also carried the seal of approval from the Catholic Church, since the medieval pretzel recipe called for just three simple ingredients, water, flour, and salt, and then could be topped with honey. During fasting periods of Lent, when the church banned animal products, pretzels offered a flavorful alternative. Waffles also existed before the medieval era, but medieval Europeans turned waffles into junk food. The idea of cooking flat cakes between metal plates dates back to ancient Greece. These cakes, known as obelios, weren't sweet like today's waffles. Medieval Europeans ate wafers made out of flour and water in a similar fashion. The Crusades widened European culinary tastes, and Crusaders brought back new additions to the wafer batter, including cinnamon, honey, and cream. In the 15th century, creative Dutchmen invented the rectangular grid pattern plates. Late medieval Europeans could buy a waffle on the street as a fast food option. In the 18th century, an English cookbook added a second F to make it waffle. According to an English medieval cookbook such as Caryatox Miscellany, people loved all kinds of tarts. The crisp crust might be topped with berries, fruits, or ginger. The English also ate a dessert called cuskinoles, a sweet ravioli filled with fruit. Gingerbread and cheesecake were popular dessert treats, as were cakes and cookies. In fact, desserts were so popular that the word dessert traces its origins back to the end of the medieval era. By the mid-16th century, the French used the word dessert to mean last course, from the word deserver, which meant to clear the table. In English, the word came to mean the final course of fruits and sweets that people ate after their meal. The discovery of the New World made sugar much cheaper and more available in Europe. By the 1540s, a London sugar refinery began producing 7 kilograms cones of crystallized sugar. Londoners quickly began adding sugar to almost every food imaginable. Many desserts began to feature sugar, including crystallized fruits and syrups, cakes and tarts. But Europeans also began seasoning their meats with sugar. In addition, people liberally used sugar on fish and vegetables. As sugar helped to also preserve food for a longer time, the desire for sweeter foods transformed the European diet for centuries. The quality of junk food is the reason behind low average lifespans as most of the urban poor were diseased with food or starving, while today we have progressive health care to protect from the hazards. The wholesomeness and safety of food concern people today. Even with standards and measures in place, people know that dirty restaurant kitchens and use of unwholesome food still exist. But then as now, the urban poor depended on such places for day-to-day -day sustenance. Medieval people, who lived alone with not even a hearth, often returned to their miserable quarters after a hard day out in the cold, at a time when the food markets were closed. They had to have something to eat, and the cook shop, often open well after midnight, with smells of savory pies and hotcakes, was it? Stay tuned to find out more about the realities of the medieval times. Serving food from the tables of times past, this is Time Capsule. Please like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications so you don't miss out. Thank you for watching. See you again next time on Time Capsule.